taking the afternoon off and we've come out to this lovely spot I've been meaning to paint for years. Perfect weather, no wind, let's get painting. So this is a scene that I've often wanted to paint and today we're here to do just that. I love the kind of, this time of year, the spring flowers, the fresh green on the pines, I think it's going to be a lovely painting. So I'll start with a drawing, let's get going. So once I've got my easel set up, I'll do a little light sketch with the 2B pencil. I'm using I think, 420 gram paper here, taped down onto a piece of hardboard. Um, in this case, obviously that line at the edge of the field at the beginning of the trees is the, is the key point. So once that's drafted out, I'm mixing up some, and trying out on a piece of paper, some cerulean blue with a little bit of pathalo blue mix in there just to kind of give that a, the intensity. I may wet the paper. I think in this case I'll probably just a good brush full of paint. I'm using about a size 20 brush here. Mixing that in. Paint that sweeping across the sky. Slowly moving down the paper. I'm going to paint over the trees as well because they're going to be stronger on top. Uh, but what I will do is probably just carefully go around the building so that maintains a certain amount of freshness. As I come down, I'll add a little bit of water in the palette, not onto the picture, and that'll just fade that away nicely down into the into the trees. So here we are, yeah, just a little more carefully around the house. I want to keep that fresh so it just stands out away from the background. When we're down a little bit further, I'll just start to add some colours in too. Looking at the picture again, looking at the scene, I think I want a quite a bright cadmium yellow as a kind of base layer and then I'll intensify the green as we move down the page. Once again keeping it all quite light at the moment we can go back and intensify the colour later on but rather than going in green too, too soon keep it bright and yellow and then add the green as we come down the page. So quite loose brush strokes. It's nice to mix the green in while everything's still damp. It'll just sort of blend nicely. And then we'll put a bit of dry brush on there later on, I think. <clears throat> this is now sap green going in on top of the, the cadmium yellow. And I might intensify that with a bit more darker green too. Key thing here is that lovely sharp line running beneath the trees. I mean we'll be able to check that and chew that up later on. Once this is dried I'm going to start going in with the sap green just to give that initial wash of, of green, believe it or not for the trees in the background. I'll paint the edge quite sharply and also a little bit carefully around that little building too. I'm kind of changing the angle of my brush to give a, a slightly more yeah, a leaf, a sort of tree-like strokes so not too sharply pointed, just almost on the side of the brush. Just helps give a little bit of texture as well. Leaving a few gaps for the, uh, the sky to shine through. So just putting these soft greens all the way across these tree areas now. I'll come back into these with some darker greens just to intensify that shadow you can see there in the background. Um, just let it dry off a little bit. Sometimes it's nice to put the darker tone in while everything's still wet, but I think I prefer to just let it dry up a little bit so there's a little bit of sharpness in these, in the shadows. The kind of, it's, it's the sunshine that will give you that kind of sharpness, so I think it's important to try and capture that. Still quite loose and leaving some gaps in to show the sky through. A 
That's got the trees done behind the little little house there. And now I'm going to try and put some trees, some turn up higher. I'm finishing off with a little bit of a jaunty sideways held brush just to give a little more texture on the top of the top of the trees. Yeah, because I'm working vertically, I just want to make sure I don't have drips running down the page. It can work sometimes, but I want to keep that contrast between the fresh yellow in the field and the darker green trees. Okay, yeah, now putting some of the pine trees in. Still with that sort of sap green. I may go back in there and have a little bit of a, more of a yellowy green in there later on we'll see how it goes At this stage it's important to keep it's almost what you're missing out really is important i think the leaving the gaps keep the sky coming through very important okay so now you can see we've got the overall shape in I'm just with the almost like a damp brush uh, no almost a dry sorry a dry brush uh, i've dipped this into a mix of sap green and some hooker's green I dry the brush on a, on a piece of paper and then just sweep sweep it across the paper, uh, the painting itself, and that just gives a nice textured finish to kind of hint at these kind of flowers in the field. So now it's time to add a little bit of sharper detail. I've mixed up a kind of quite an intense um, hooker's green, possibly a little bit of burnt umber. And I'm just keeping an eye on that horizon, that, that background picture and starting to add the tones in, leaving a little bit of light area in the foreground now and again, just to hint at small bushes and plants in the foreground. The main thing is the, the intensity around that little building, look how dark that shadow is there. I might even go back and strengthen this up a bit later. Be brave. Get this in nice and dark. That really does accentuate the, the small house and it's that Mediterranean sunshine. That's what we're trying to explain. That's what we're trying to get over. I do like a little drama in painting, as my uh, students know. Just carefully build this, and we can blend the edges a little bit if need be. But the important thing is that, that lovely contrast. Bearing in mind that the sun is coming in from the from the left hand side, so we want to bring in the darks on the right hand side to, of the trees and bushes. Now I'm just kind of going back in with a little bit of sap green just to kind of soften some of the edges and we'll go back it's easier to intensify a shadow rather than it is to lighten it keep a little bit of texture a bit of light and shade in there as you paint through keep looking at the the scene you're painting as well very important and easily forgotten careful application here trying to keep that kind of loose feel but at the same time being uh, just decisive with, a, with brush strokes you'll see if you look in the detail there's a nice a bit of light and shade coming through now a darkness around the little house I still think that Actually, if you look at the edge, the contrast between the trees and the field, you'll, uh, I think it still needs to be intensified. I may well let this layer dry and then go back again with an even stronger mix.
Eventually we'll paint the tree trunks on top of this. Once again, I'm just trying to keep that, that yellow area fresh. But unfortunately there is some green sort of running down into it. I'm gonna perhaps go back and just with almost a pure yellow out of the tube, I'll, I'll just put a slash of yellow across there just to sharpen it up. As I was saying, this is a picture I've been uh, thinking of painting for many, uh, many a while, long a while, many years, and uh, <clears throat> finally actually pulled it off the road in the car and um, decided to make do the painting there. There's a number of views I could have chosen. I may well do some more. The I've also driven past there when um, there's been a sort of cloudy sky as well, and just a shaft of sunlight has illuminated the scene spectacularly. I mean, I might even have to uh, get out there on a, on a cloudy day too. So yeah, I'm just adding that in darker intensity of colour now under the pines under the umbrella pines keeping the blue shining through here and there Standing back and um, assessing the overall scene. Like I said, I think that that edge is important, and I may yet go back and strengthen that up. Is it? it was interesting how the what looked like a strong blue sky does eventually kind of recede into the picture. But now I've mixed up quite an intense. It's a burnt umber with a little bit of Payne's grey. So we're using a smaller brush here just to paint some initial tree trunks and branches in. It always helps if you paint from the ground upwards, just to flick it away. It's so easy to mess up painting up by putting branches on that are just too thick. So go with care. So use a smaller brush if you need to. Do a little uh, glimpses of of branches through the trees. So what I'll do next is add a little bit of white or a little bit of Naples yellow on top of this trunk to give you that feeling of dappled sunlight. It's important to keep those outer branches very fine. I've seen many a painting sort of ruined but um, not improved by the kind of clumsy brushwork in those outer branches. It's so easy to just put them down a little bit too thick and it's uh, difficult to repair. a slightly diluted version of the trunk colour going over the leaves, just sort of hinting, it's taking the trunk and the branches beneath the trees. Okay, now let's get a bit of shadow on this, this little house. 
Got a strong shadow underneath the roof. I'll have a little bit of texture into the walls as well. eventually put a little plant or bush front of the building on the left hand side so if you just see me there I'm just painting some shadow in there in advance of the, of the little tree going on in front. Now some a little bit of brickwork just to break up that facade and that little splash of colour on the door. burnt sienna and yellow ochre on the roof. But in patches, it's a kind of patched up old building. Some glue for the door. Looking back at the scene now again, I'm thinking I need to add a little bit of slightly yellowy green into those pine trees. So I've mixed uh, a little bit of cadmium yellow, a little bit, sorry, a bit of yellow ochre, I think it's sap green. Just softening that into the uh, picture. That's some really dark tones. I've got that hooker's green and sort of ultramarine blue. Always good to have a little bit of scrap paper on the side just to try your colours out before you drop it in. I'm adding some of the really dark shadows now. Keep your eye on the scene you're painting. It's easy to uh, forget that's what you're supposed to be doing. adding a little of that extra dark tone, sharpening up that edge and adding some touches of shadow, deep shadow on the trees on the left hand side as well. Just balance that out. Kind of the whole shape, it could have been a perfect straight line but I've given it a slight curve, perhaps a little bit more natural. at the picture there I think yeah my greenery is probably still a little bit light but I think I'm gonna have that have it like that. Keep the contrast. Finished now. I'm just, just put that little tree in, on the left hand side of the house there. I'm kind of blending the, the tree trunks into it. I have to have a little bit of dark in there just to give it some more shape. Still working on this edge. I've mixed a little bit of white and Naples yellow. Hang on for that. Just a little bit of hint of sunlight on those tree trunks just to make them lift off the page. Blown 
you get in a little bit here and there. It's not so sharp. across that edge I think just need to sharpen that up a little bit and then just a hint of some planting too that's where your dark shadows help because you can drop your yellow flowers onto it and they really do jump out remains really is just a hint of a few flowers in the foreground and possibly just one more run across that edge So the painting's finished, I think it's worked out well. Uh, I stopped there because you can so easily overdo a watercolour painting. And um, if you'd like to see more tutorials like this, please hit the subscribe button below and don't forget to visit our website for information about workshops and painting holidays. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.